Great Old Testament prophets leading into the New Testament who had that great blessing to be the prophet that would see the actual Messiah. The prophet who said that he was not worthy even to loose the sandal straps of the one that was coming after him shows us a path in that very statement, that statement of humility. As we know, he says elsewhere that I must decrease and he must increase. And for Christ to truly increase in our own lives, we have to decrease in his presence as well. We have to humble ourselves and we have to be as the forerunner, one who makes the rough ways smooth, who makes the crooked ways straight, who brings the mountains low and lifts up the valleys to make a way fit for the Lord to come. And that's not just in the physical sense, it is in our own lives, in our own hearts. Those examples of making these things even, rough ways even, smooth, should be an example of how we're to treat our own souls or our own hearts. When St. Paul tells us he knows how to both abound and how to be abased, we must learn that too, to have a middle ground the way we live our lives in sobriety. We see the forerunner who lived what to us looks like a very austere life, and perhaps it was, but he did not allow himself to be taken in by the vain things of the world. He certainly did not live in any great opulence. But he lived in a way that was simple, a way that was extremely humble, a way that we can certainly learn from, to be more humble and simple in our own lives. And we also see that he preached repentance, he preached truth, everything was about truth, for which he eventually was murdered for speaking truth. He also had the blessing in this way of life, this austere way of life, of being able to lay his hands on the very Savior of all, to be able to baptize our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ. What greater blessing could any hands have ever experienced than that? But he shows us that way. We who often like to distract ourselves endlessly with frivolity and laughter, when the scriptures tell us, woe to us who laugh now, for we shall weep. It doesn't mean we always have to be austere, but it means we have to have balance. It means we can't make everything a joke. It means that we have to have a place for Christ. When we're constantly drawing attention to ourselves with laughter, we lose prayer. But likewise, when we constantly weep and constantly mourn, we lose sight Christ, who is also eternal hope. And this making these valleys exalted and lowering the mountain shows us that way. We don't try to live in too great exalted estates, but we also don't try to get too depressed or allow ourselves to be so, to be living in the middle ground, to be living in a middle way, to live in that royal way. But of course, our orthodox royal way to the rest of the world now looks rather austere and difficult. But I maintain that the basic orthodox way of life, which is experienced throughout the saints throughout all ages, is a very normal way of life. Everything else is abnormal. The lack of fasting, the lack of prayer, the lack of sobriety is, is crazy. It's a crazy world we live in, and we've allowed this to become a norm. Now, St. John was murdered for many reasons, but primarily for speaking truth about Herod living in adultery with his brother's wife. How does that affect us? All around us, adultery, fornication rules the day. It's kind of become a norm. And we don't say anything about it anymore. The television shows we watch are proliferated with it. And we just say it's just a television show. But it's affecting our souls. We can't allow these things to enter into our homes. That's not the way of John the Baptist. It's not the way of Christ. It's not something we'd want to see with Christ. Hopefully we'd be embarrassed this was on with Christ in our midst. But if Christ is truly dwelling in our hearts, it is in our midst. We live in a world where sexuality, everything, it just become the norm. We live in a world where even in the Orthodox Church, people live together, expect to come in and get married instantly without separating for a time. This is not the normal way of the Orthodox Church. Never has been, never has been accepted, but we are succumbing to the ways of this world and allowing things to be just the way they are because the rest of the world says it's okay. This cannot be. We must be a light. We must be a city on a hill for the rest of the world. We must show moderation. We must show sobriety. 
We must show chastity and purity to the world because the world desperately seeks this type of purity. We see that in the saints I talk about tomorrow, and we certainly see in the life of John the Baptist. I know many Athenite monks will tell you that if you're having struggles with purity, call on John the Baptist. He is a speedy intercessor for that. This great forerunner shows us a royal way. It doesn't look royal in the way of the world, but it is the smooth way. It is the peaceful way. It is the way that allows us not to get too low. It is the way that allows us not to be too exalted, but to decrease that Christ might increase in our hearts. Learn that way from our great forerunner who shows us that path. St. John the Baptist prayed to God for us. Amen. Amen.